Hey guys, I want to make a new video today about a topic that I recently realized actually I don't think I've heard anyone else talk about this but we're back to topic that I've been covering many times on my channel regarding subacromial impingement. Subacromial impingement is by the vast majority if not everyone considered to be impingement of the supraspinatus tendon under the acromial bone or the subacromial bursa for that matter predominantly happening in in abduction of the arm all right guys now what i've come to realize you can see this when you do ultrasound because you track that supraspinatus tendon on ultrasound it very 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 easily merges or or tangents with that infraspinatus tendon so although we we, we regard the infraspinatus muscle as an external rotator and the majority of the muscle is, it's important to realize that that superior portion of the infraspinatus muscle, and I'm going to put a good picture of that in the video here, it attaches very far up on the tubercle. On the superior part of the of the of the um, of the humeral head, and why is this so important, guys? Well, it's important because it passes, or it also passes under that subacromial uh, passage. It passes under that acromial roof, and especially if you're in slight internal rotation, which a lot of patients are, they are in excessive internal rotation when they are using their arms. If you're in, the, if you're in so a certain degree of internal rotation during abduction in an improper scapular position, you can impinge that, that infraspinatus tendon to the acromial roof. And now you will have infraspinatus tendinitis or damage secondary to subacromial impingement, guys. Now, the main purpose, purpose, purpose of this video is to talk about this phenomenon in general that this can happen the second thing is how do we treat it because what i found is that it's very difficult to train the superior part the superior part of the infraspinatus muscle with with sole external rotation personally i've not had good success with that you can often see cramping in certain positions uh, and you st it stays painful even if you're doing a lot of external rotations and moreover I've seen that even if the patient might have a tear or slight tear or damage to the muscle they do external rotation it doesn't hurt it should it should hurt in the initial phase of rehab if there's damage there now why is that guys well this is a similar discovery to what I had with the piriformis muscle piriformis is considered to be an external rotator but then I made a video like, what, five, six years ago? And I said, no, guys, it's more a coronal plane stabilizer. And what does it actually do? It does horizontal abduction. That's kind of the same thing we're dealing with here, guys. The superior part of the infraspinatus, which is what's typically going to get injured, because that's the part that will come in contact with the subacromial roof, with the acromial roof. This part to get that you have to be in slight external sorry in slight um, flexion, slight external rotation, and you come into a. It's kind of a circular motion, guys. It's not a. It's not a straight. It's not a straight horizontal abduction. It's like a kind of a circular movement like this. Let me see if I can reproduce that for you. Something like that, and when you get to where. When you get to where the damage is, it should hurt in that position. It's a little bit tricky to do. But I'm going to set up another view here. I'm going to see if I can reproduce this for you. All right. So I'm hoping, I hope that I'm able to show you this, guys, because honestly, it's not so easy to do. You don't really get it so much when you hold the band or the, or the weight in your hands. So what I find works the best is to get it over the tip of the elbow and you use the elbow to crank as you slightly go into external rotation, guys, okay? It looks something like this. And I'm going to slight external rotation as I'm horizontally abducting. 
you should go very nice and easy. Now, if it hurts, if you go too hard, it's not going to work, guys, all right? Nice and easy, nice and slow. And if it hurts, especially up there at the peak, it's probably good. But here's an important caveat. Your shoulder blade for this, remember, when you're doing this position, when you're doing this, this, this movement, if you have pre-existing scapular dyskinesia, you're going to put yourself in the dyskinesic, well, within the movement of dysfunction, guys, all right? Within the position of dysfunction. So we have to treat, we have to fix the scapular positioning first. You can look at my other videos for that, especially the one about scapular upwards rotation, okay? So it's very important that scapula is in upward rotation as you come into that position. Because if the scapula is down and you go into the position, it's gonna hurt, but it's hurting because you, you, you're damaging yourself. It's not the same thing. So you need the scapula to be in perfect position, and then you gently, 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 gently go to that, that sweet spot where you feel that twinge in the muscle. If the patient really has problem with the, with the infraspinatus muscle. You can usually palpate the tendon. You go just slightly posterior to the spine of the scapula and you palpate from the tendon on the tubercle along that spine of the scapula. And it should hurt. Especially if you're dealing with a problem in that upper segment, guys. Obviously, if there's a tear more caudally in the muscle, you can go to the, to the mid-segment or inferior fibers. But what I've found is that the majority of the tears, they happen, they happen superiorly. And why? Well, because that's where they are compromised in that subacromial passage. I hope that makes sense, guys. So, what are the takeaways from this video? Infraspinatus tendinopathy is a potential complication of subacromial impingement. And then the next little shocker there, if I, might, if I may say so, is we should not regard those fibers as pure external rotators, which the, 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 the inferior fibers and the middle fibers of the infraspinatus are to, to a much greater extent, whereas that those upper fibers, they have a greater role in horizontal abduction with slight external rotation. And it, it's not so easy to reproduce. You might have to fiddle a little bit around with this. Just make sure that you're in upwards rotation while you do it. Because if you have this problem and you're playing around with this and your shoulder is in downwards rotation, you're not going to get better. You're going to get worse. Okay? Um, if you're doing this correctly, what kind of set reps should you be looking at? It depends on what phase of rehab you're in, guys. But I would say, you know, I try to stick fairly religiously to the notion of one set, one maximum two sets to mild, moderate fatigue twice per week. You do more than that, it tends to not get much better. If you choose to more, do more than that, if you want to stimulate it a little bit more frequently, then I would stay far away from any kind of failure. But it's up to you if you want to take my word for it or not, guys. Either way, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you'll leave it in the chat box.